to all, in closing, I'm saying to all of you, do what it takes. If you can do $5 or $20 or $2,000, $2,000 would be better, <laughs> but five's fine. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, you know, tell the person online at the supermarket, tell them about Pat and what we represent. Now I've spoken enough, so without any further ado, I give you the next congressman from the 20th Congressional District, Patrick Ziegler. <laughs> This is, uh, wow, I don't even know what to say about this. Uh, this is huge. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it'd be real easy to uh, stand in the back corner there where I was, listening to some of these speakers. I mean, geez, we got Steve Van Zandt to come down today, so that's pretty <laughs> nice. Uh, that's great. And, and all my other friends, family members here, of course, my lovely wife. We got the kids. William, I think, said he wants to be on TV and change his mind. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, back in the corner. But you know, it'd be real easy to, to see everyone here and all the people that have come out to stand out in that back corner and watch people circling. I mean, we've had people leave. I watched them circle the building a few times and, and just head down the block because of the snow. There's just no place to park. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it'd be real easy to see all these signs that, you know, life-size banners with your own name on them and think it's about me, but I'm a little smarter than that. Not a lot smarter than that, but I'm a little smarter than that. And I know full well that what everyone is here for what I'm here for is to represent the people in this room and the people of the 20th Congressional District. And it's not because it's me, it's not because it's Patrick Ziegler, it's not because I'm a Republican or a committeeman, it's not because I'm even a Tea Party patriot. It's quite simply just because I'm one of you. I'm a citizen legislator. I'm a citizen representative, and I can tell you here today, right now, that I have no interest in a political legacy. In fact, it still makes me a little queasy when I pull up the Google News alerts and my name is on it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's weird. But that's not what I'm out for. I don't want to be in Washington. I'm not going because I want to be there. I'm not going because I want to leave my family our third on the way. I'm not going because I want to spend that much time in that kind of heat. I'd rather go roll around in the snow. I don't do well with the heat. <laughs> We need people to go to Washington because the people that are there now from both parties are not getting it done. We need to send someone to Washington that can look at people like yourself and say, I've been in the private sector the past few years. I've sat around the kitchen table every month wondering how we pay the bills, how we stay in the house, how we keep the kids in our school district. And I got to tell you, for any of you who don't know, let me take a second and welcome all of you to Burn Hills, Balsam Lake. This is just the greatest place to live you're going to find. We've got our supervisors today. <laughs> really a great place to live and we want to stay here we want to raise our children here we want to keep our kids in this school district you know a lot of people said the Tea Party movement is just the anti-tax movement that's not true you know I don't mind writing that school tax bill because I see what we get for it I see what we get here in Burn Hills Boston Lake because I know people like Desiree on this fine establishment who gave us this room for free who've been so hospitable and so gracious not because it's me because she believes in what we're doing here actually it might be because I know you can. because of what we're doing here and what this movement stands for. If you look around and you look at the people next to you, you look at the people across from you, we have people that are involved with political parties. We've got some, uh, some great folks, like I said, our supervisor's candidate from last year, Pete Connors. And we've got a few others that are going to come a little bit late from the Boston Town Committee. Just a fantastic group of people here in our Republican Committee. We've got guys like Rich Harris here from the College Republicans who brought some of our young people uh, with them, I believe all from Siena. We want to thank them for coming. We have people here that are involved with the Republican Party or the Conservative Party. Um, I've even talked to people involved with the Democratic Party that are disgusted by what's happening and have promised in a very quiet way without anyone knowing that they're going to work for my campaign. And again, it's flattering, it's humbling, but it's not me. It's the movement. It's the fact that people about a year ago started getting together and saying, we just can't take any more. We just can't take any higher taxes. We can't take lesser freedoms. When we talked this past weekend, we had a campaign meeting. We said, you know, this campaign has to have three very simple goals. More jobs, lower taxes, greater freedoms. That's it. That's what we're about. That's what these people are about. That's why the Tea Party started. That's why people have been getting together and going out to the Campaign for Liberty meetings. The Sons of Liberty, the Upstate Conservative Coalition, the Homefront Patriots. Who am I missing here? The 912 group. I know Jeremy's here. They started joining the Liberty Council. They're joining their Republican committees because people need hope. We need an opportunity to put up citizen legislators who understand how difficult it's gotten for people like us. And I tell you what, the government doesn't want this. 
Neither party wants this. We are not beholden to anyone but the people in this room and the people in this district. We have no money backers. We have no party hacks. We have no party bosses. We have, uh, I mean, the most influential person we have here is probably Steve Van Zandt. You're the best. <laughs> and your campaign is in serious trouble. <laughs> I mean, this, this, this Wait a minute, you know what? I quit show business to do radio, and I was the only one that knew I quit. <laughs> I just feel bad I was on your show the day before you lost it. Right? Really? No that could be a good omen. No correlation, I'm sure. Well, we're Things glad. happen for a reason, and that's why you're up there, my friend. So what we need to do is not take... Not come out of this abysmal Congress, this abysmal presidential administration, and this god-awful congressman that we elected last year. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the only thing funnier than him is Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't compete with this. I just, I I'm here for you, Bernie. Steve for Congress. <laughs> so... You know, we look at what's happening in Washington, and we know that we're all afraid for our future. But more importantly, we're afraid for our children's future and our grandchildren's future. I mean, can you believe that they just increased the national debt ceiling to $14 trillion? And it will go higher. You're absolutely right. You know, the problem we have right now is that our freedoms are being wiped away, and it's always under the guise of national security. It's under the guise of economic security. We pay these bailouts because they're too big to fail. You know, my company wasn't too big to fail. We went out of business. Mm -hmm. You know, this restaurant here isn't too big to fail. You know, I, I mean, I'm not talking out, of, you know, talking out of turn here. Desiree, I mean, look, look at this parking lot. This isn't something that happens in Boston Lake every day. Small businesses are struggling. People on fixed incomes are struggling. Even our farmers are struggling. And the government does what's in the best interest of the political hacks who want to keep their jobs and stay in Washington. Well, let's get one thing clear right now. I don't want to go to Washington, but I'll go because someone needs to stop the mess for us. But just to prove it's not about me, although, <laughs> thank you, that's very kind, but I got a great call yesterday. It was from a reporter out in Cooperstown, and he asked what was happening with the campaign. I told him, I said, you know, I'm sorry I haven't been able to be as vocal, but I had to resolve my employment situation first, and now I'll be out there a lot more. We're going to announce tomorrow. And he says, your timing is great. He said, you know, our news, now this is Cooperstown, our newspaper's getting calls about your campaign. And what he said was interesting. He didn't say we're getting calls about you. It's not about me. He's getting calls about this campaign, and this is why. You know, the Republican candidates looking for this office, they announced to a press release. They plunk down a bunch of money, and they start working the county chairs. Now, i got to go through that process as well, and I have no problem going through the process. I'm a proud Republican, in most, uh, for the most part, because of the people we have here in the town of Boston, and a few of the people we have in the state, but certainly not for the job we've done at the federal level. Let's not say there aren't good Republicans out there, because there are. Anyone who saw the health care summit heard a guy from Wisconsin named Paul Ryan. Yes. We need more of him. Right. We need more guys like him. Anybody that's from Rensselaer knows we got a guy out there named Tony Jordan. A lot more guys like Tony Jordan. But we need more people that are willing to take this plunge because we understand the impact of the bills that are being passed, the impact that it's having on people like us. And what they're interested in is our campaign because people are realizing, as Steve said, people are coming out of the woodwork, people like us, and we're showing up at rallies. I was just talking to a gentleman here that said every weekend in Fort Edward, I believe it was, Glens Falls. and Glens Falls, every weekend, every for, weekend a year now. for a year, should get him up here too. Every weekend for a year. Thank you for the assist. There you go, with the Gadsden flag. They're getting people out, waving the Gadsden flags, waving their signs, and talking to average American people about what's happening. As Steve put it, the sleeping giant is awakening. And all I'm looking to do is represent that sleeping giant, to represent people like you. And people are concerned about this. We're going to go for the Republican endorsement, the conservative endorsement, the Independence Party endorsement. I take the Democratic Party endorsement if they gave it to me. But most importantly, what we need to do is continue connecting with people like yourself. We know the party, and a lot of the party bosses, and a lot of the people with money, they want someone that will answer to them. We need to show them, we answer to no one. We answer to each other. Thank you very much. For